All right, hi, I'm continuing on with my videos regarding sufficient evidence for my spiritual or my Christian beliefs. In the first video, I talked about what the concept of sufficient evidence is and how I think we, I can present the case for my beliefs without having complete concrete proof similar to what can be done in a court of law. Um, and the second video I talked about what sufficient evidence is or what I think is sufficient evidence for the belief in a human soul and why I think humans have souls. In this video, I want to talk about sufficient evidence for the afterlife. So a little bit of background, um, just one quick story. Uh, I was talking with a coworker in the car. Him and I were driving to something work related and he's just about to retire at this point when we had this discussion. And I wanted to kind of use that as a springboard to talk about uh, faith related stuff. I asked him, you know, if he'd done uh, if he'd done a good job of preparing for retirement. And uh, he said, yeah, you know, he's done retirement accounts and so forth. I said, okay, um, are you going to be, or have you been doing, a, have you been focusing on, or are you going to be focusing on preparing for your post-retirement? And he said, yeah, you know, he kind of reiterated what he already said before. And I said, no, no. Um, what I mean by that is after you're done with your retirement phase of life, or when your life ends, are you preparing for that sufficiently and uh, he said well you know and of course I know it's a little bit awkward I recognize that um, I don't know that there's any way to really avoid it I don't like to go there but at the same time I do want to talk about this stuff with people um, especially if I don't know what they believe and also if it could help um, you know, potentially influence them or guide them um, to just to think about it at least and so he said there's no really way to know what happens after we die. You know, kind of just saying, since we don't know, you know, you just ignore it, basically. And so, um, the concept of this video, and what I'm talking about now, is that, well, I think there really is. I'm going to talk about it from a non-Christian perspective, and from a Christian perspective. Um, if you're not a Christian then there's no real point to talking about it from a Christian perspective. Um, if you don't believe in the Bible, then there's no point really to point to stuff in the Bible. Um, or if you don't believe in Jesus, then there's no point really to talk about what he did um, as far as you know, using that as evidence for the afterlife. But I do want to talk about that stuff, um, but I'm going to first talk about, from a non-Christian perspective, why I think there is sufficient evidence for the afterlife. The primary evidence for that, um, for me, is near-death experiences. Now, um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically circumstances where someone either is clinically dead, um, they're in you know, an operating room or um, a hospital or an accident on the side of the road, and the, the paramedics or the doctor or someone declares them clinically deceased. Um, either the brain ceases to function and or their heart stops to pump blood, um, they no longer have a pulse, etc. Um, in some cases, these occur not necessarily when someone is clinically dead, but in a comatose state or on the verge of death. Um, there have been circumstances or stories of that happening. If uh, you do a quick search on Amazon, there are over 3,000 results on Amazon with regards to books on the topic. So um, a lot of these, I don't know what percentage, but a lot of these are individual stories and people writing books about what happened to them and what they encountered. Um, I've read a few of them. Uh, specifically, I've read, I've read four of these books or four books on a topic. The last book I, I read is called Imagine Heaven. I think that one was my favorite because he compared more than 100 stories of near-death experiences. And, um, but he didn't look in one country or one uh, gender or one religion. He looked across a whole spectrum of genders, religions, ages, professions, countries, cultures, um, and, and compared them to see what, was, what, what common threads existed, if any, between them. And there were many common threads. There were 
a lot of them were strikingly similar in what they described. The, uh, another good research um, resource is the Near-Death Experience Research Foundation. They document, so far, over 4,639 NDEs, and that's to date. It's a great resource. Again, lots of information. There's a lot of details, and questions are asked of the individuals, and the answers are provided. So um, it's the NDERF. Okay, so now I want to talk about it from a Christian perspective. The Bible does talk extensively about both heaven and hell. There are eight stories of people other than Jesus in the Bible that are said to have raised people from the dead. There is Elijah, um, who raised someone. Elisha, who raised two people. Jesus raised three. Peter, one. And Paul, another. And believe it or not... Um, there are actually stories of people being raised from the dead still to this day. Um, I've actually met someone who claims to have been risen from the dead by his mom. Um, not going to go into details, but... Um, and then I've also seen other stories about people who have raised others from the dead. Um, so, you know, I know that's difficult to believe, but um, that's kind of the afterthought, not the actual primary evidence. but. Thanks 